Welcome to episode 198 of the GP Core Content Podcast on Viral Arthritis, hosted by Dr. Thomas Perkins from gpcorecontent.com. For help in passing the GP Fellowship exams, head to our website at gpcorecontent.com where you can purchase our range of exam prep resources, videos, and written study notes. Viral arthritis can be caused by any number of viruses. The most common viruses that cause a viral arthritis picture are Ross River, followed by parvovirus B19, and then rubella. Some of the other viruses that can cause viral arthritis include Hep B, Hep C, Barmer Forest virus, measles, mumps, rubella, Epstein Barr virus, adenovirus or enterovirus, HIV, dengue, Zika, and yellow fever. The key features generally on presentation will be an acute onset of a polyarthritis that's symmetric, affecting your hands and feet, and associated with things like myalgia, fever, headache, rash, red eyes. The exact program depends on the virus that you're talking about. For example, in Parvo virus or in Ross River virus, um, you'll get arthralgia, myalgia, rash, and fever, and you'll get an arthritis that lasts weeks to months. With parvo, parvovirus B19, uh, you have an arthritis or arthralgia in adults with a preceding febrile illness, and that arthritis can last weeks. And in rubella, you get an acute maculopapular rash, which spares the palms and soles, and that arthritis can last weeks, and that can also occur when you have the rubella vaccine. Interestingly, some of the viruses are alpha viruses and some are flaviviruses. Some of the alpha viruses include Ross River, Barma Forest, and Chicken Gunya virus, and the flaviviruses include Dengue, Zika, and Yellow Fever. What investigations do you do in viral arthritis? Well, typically, it'll be, you know, most of the time a clinical diagnosis. You can confirm it with serology. The serology you might do would include a full blood count, uh, looking for something like a lymphopenia or lymphocytosis. If you're suspecting specific agents, you can do viral PCRs for those diseases or you can do antibodies for those diseases, your IgG and your IgM. Sometimes you can have a rheumatoid factor present in serology, though this is usually a low titer and transient. And then if the, the arthritis picture persists beyond 6 to 12 months, depending on what you read, you can start to screen uh, or you can start to think about rheumatoid arthritis and start doing um, some of those autoimmune uh, investigations include rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP as well as ANA. Now a little bit about IgG and IgM, which one's which, always kind of forget that. It's worth remembering that IgM rises first and falls first and IgG is delayed, but it's persistent. Sometimes though the IgM antibodies don't always represent recent infection because they can also persist uh, in some of the viral arthritis um, viruses for up to two years. Something you can do is pair them and you can monitor those over time. Uh, you know, in the acute phase, you'll either have um, IgM positive or negative, but IgG will generally be negative. And then in the convalescent phase, IgM will become positive and IgG will become positive, And then over time, your IgM will drop off and your IgG will be left positive. So when you read your um, pathology reports of those, there'll be different ranges depending on the diseases that you're talk talking about. The general treatment for arthritis, uh, in viral arthritis, it normally lasts for 6 to 12 weeks depending on what you read. So you're really just doing symptomatic support using simple analgesia like NSAIDs and paracetamol. You can consider a brief course of low dose, so less than 10 megs of prednisone daily. Uh, depending on the symptoms, but this is generally discouraged, as our DMARDs are also generally discouraged because the onset uh, of the effects of DMARDs, uh, as described in that rheumatoid arthritis podcast, typically takes up to 12 weeks, and the viral arthritis symptoms have usually resolved by this time. It's rarely needed to refer. Typically, if system, symptoms last beyond 6 or 12 weeks, so it was six weeks in uh, an AFP article and 12 weeks in ETG. 
Uh, if they persist beyond that, then reconsider your diagnosis and you start thinking about rheumatoid arthritis at that point. Also, if you're suspecting HIV, Hep B or C, it's worth uh, investigating and um, referring sooner rather than later for those diseases as well. So yeah, that's it for viral arthritis. So once again, if you enjoyed this podcast, head over to the website at gpforcontent.com and purchase our range of GP exam prep resources. 